Todd Gurley was the best running back in football at one point, a complete back that could catch as well as he could run and practically lived in the end zone. But as quickly as he reached the mountaintop, he was cut and eventually dropped out of the NFL. Here is the rise and fall of Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley began high school in the small town of Tarboro, North Carolina. Not only was he a three-sport athlete, but Gurley actually quit football his freshman year to focus on basketball and even made varsity as a freshman. His coaches convinced Gurley to come back to football mid-season, thankfully. If not, this video could be about NBA star Todd Gurley or track star Todd Gurley. Without any coaching, Gurley was invited to a track meet to just run. Little did he know it was a qualifier for Team USA. Gurley showed up, ran hurdles, and won the event with ease. He got a coach and an invitation to Italy to qualify for the next step. He finished 15th in Italy, but he also clocked a 10-7 100-meter in state championship runs back in North Carolina. We haven't even begun to discuss his high school football career, which is a must-see highlight reel. As a senior, he scored 38 touchdowns and ran for 2,600 yards. In his last high school game, he ran for 242 yards, scored four touchdowns, and carried Tarboro High to a state championship. As arguably the greatest running back in North Carolina history, it was a huge event when the four-star recruit committed, and he was going to be a dog. It only took one game for Gurley to become the starter for the SEC powerhouse Georgia Bulldogs. That one game, he hit pay dirt twice on just eight runs and rushed for exactly 100 yards. If that wasn't enough, Gurley housed a 100-yard kick in the first quarter of his college career. Head coach Mark Richt's staff was smart enough to make him the feature back, and it paid dividends. He became just the second true freshman in Georgia history to hit the 1,000-yard mark, his name next to the mythical Herschel Walker. Gurley was second in the SEC in rushing yards and was named All-Conference. His sophomore year, everyone knew he was the dog's biggest weapon, but they still couldn't stop him. However, just as another elite season got going, Todd Gurley went down with a nasty, nagging, sprained ankle against LSU late. That would derail UGA's season, as they lost two of the three games Gurley would miss. Add in a hip injury, and Gurley played at less than 100% for almost the entire season. His junior year, he started off hot again, rushing for 198 yards and three touchdowns in an opener against Clemson. He continued that ridiculous pace through the first half of the season with 773 rushing yards in just five games. He was well on his way to setting every Georgia record, but then he got caught up. The NCAA investigated Todd Gurley to find out that he was illegally taking money for signed memorabilia and autographs. They suspended him for the next four games. The worst part is, he would only suit up one more time as a Georgia Bulldog. In a huge game, and the return game for Gurley, the dogs blew out top 10 Auburn. Up big in the fourth, they handed it to Gurley, who went right up the middle before cutting. With no one around, he collapsed after the cut, tore an ACL, out the rest of the season. Gurley made the decision to skip his senior year and enter the NFL draft. While it fizzled out near the end, Todd Gurley is one of Georgia's most prolific players ever. He left second in rushing yards and touchdowns, just behind, you guessed it, Herschel Walker. Despite many people convinced Gurley would fall in the draft because of the injury, it didn't happen. Surprising everyone, the St. Louis Rams took Todd Gurley with the 10th pick of the 2015 draft. The setback setup was a major comeback. Gurley recovered from the injury faster than anyone expected. He only missed the first two games, when most thought he wouldn't play at all in 2015. After easing into action in Week 3 against the Steelers, in Week 4 against the Cardinals, he put on a show. Todd Gurley, the St. Louis Ram, looked just like Todd Gurley, the Georgia Bulldog. In just 14 carries, he ran for 144 yards in the second half alone. Being the engine behind the Rams' win, Gurley took that momentum and ran for three more straight 100-yard games. One of the biggest NFL headlines was, Gurley has arrived. He scored his first NFL touchdown against the Browns, before finding the end zone in the next five straight games. In just 12 games his rookie year, he ran for over 1,100 yards and scored double-digit touchdowns. In his first four games as the Rams' starter, he put up more rushing yards than any running back in NFL history, with 566 yards. The world was on notice. Gurley was ranked a top 25 player by peers, he was one of five rookies named a Pro Bowler, and he won Rookie of the Year. Unfortunately, Gurley was in for a sophomore slump in 2016. Teams stacked the box against him and the Rams stunk. But it set up for the best thing that could happen for Gurley's career, the hiring of Sean McVay. 
In 2017, McVeigh used Gurley in every possible way, as Gurley had almost 800 yards receiving to go along with his second 1,000-yard rushing campaign. With 1,305 yards and 19 total touchdowns, the Rams won 11 games behind Gurley's dominance, and he became just the eighth player ever to have 1,300-plus rushing and 750-plus receiving yards in a season. With a division in hand, the Rams sat Gurley for the final game of the year, and he got passed by for the rushing title. But everyone knew who the best back in football was. It was Todd Gurley as he took home the Offensive Player of the Year award. You know what you do when you have the best offensive player in football? You open up the checkbook. And that's exactly what the Rams did, as Gurley became the highest paid running back of all time, earning $57.5 million over four years. He was king of the world. But all kingdoms come to an end, right? This wasn't the case for Gurley, though, to start the 2018 season, as he continued his insane production. The Rams were better than ever. Gurley scored in the first 11 games and was on pace to reset all of his career highs. But the extreme workload he was taking on began to wear on him. He struggled in the last two season games before they shut him down until the playoffs. In a warrior effort, Gurley grinded out another 100-yard playoff game to beat the Cowboys. But the injuries took their toll. The NFC Championship game was when it became very apparent something was off with Todd Gurley. The Rams beat the Saints, but Gurley struggled as he ran just four times for 10 yards and a touchdown. In the next two weeks leading up to a Super Bowl game against the Patriots, Todd Gurley was the main storyline. How healthy was he? The Rams stuck to the story of inflammation in his knees, leaving the world to speculate. Some said he was not as badly hurt as was being led on, and other reports said it was far worse. In the biggest moment of his career, it was clear Gurley wasn't the same guy. He struggled to do anything with the ball, and the Rams' offense, without their most prolific player, was suffocated in a devastating Super Bowl loss. In the offseason, it was revealed that Gurley had arthritis in his knees, a common effect of someone with previously torn ACLs, but a massive detriment to an NFL running back in their prime. 2019 arrived, and questions about Gurley's future circled the Rams' camp. They tried to force-feed him the ball, as defenses began to evolve to McVay's offense. The explosion was no longer there. The player that averaged nearly five yards a touch was now getting bottled up for three yards a carry. The cuts weren't as crisp, and a guy that looked like a reincarnated Jim Brown was a shell of himself. He scored 12 times, but didn't break 100 yards in a single game. He posted just 885 yards. In less than a year, he went from the most explosive weapon in football to basically a has-been. The real issue for the Rams was Gurley's price tag. As the highest paid back in the league, he made nearly double what the guys at the top of the rushing leaders list were making. The Rams were cash-strapped and straddling the salary cap line. He could have possibly stayed and had a bounce-back year, but with worsening arthritis, it was unlikely, and the money didn't make sense. So, on March 19, 2020, the LA Rams released Todd Gurley. Now, with minimal risk, somebody could take a shot at Gurley and hope for a resurgence. That would be the Atlanta Falcons. It was clear Gurley still had a nose for the end zone, as he scored another nine touchdowns as a Falcon in 2020. The issue was his productivity. At 1,460 touches after an ACL injury, he wasn't nearly as explosive anymore. His low yards per carry in his final season as a Ram continued in Atlanta, averaging just under 3.5 per carry as a Falcon. As the season ended and his one-year prove-it deal ended, Gurley wasn't re-signed. In less than a three-year span, Gurley showed us just how volatile the life of an NFL running back is. He went from the best weapon in football to jobless in the span of 18 months. It will always be a story of what could have been, as Todd Gurley is one of the most special talents we've seen and one of the best running backs from this past decade. But one bad knee took the Canton train right off the tracks. It's hard not to look at Gurley like the NFL's Derrick Rose, truly sensational for such a short period of time.